Hello. In this video, we're going to consider one of the principal structures that makes up the limbic system, the hippocampus. Now, the hippocampus is found deep in the medial temporal lobe, superior to the parahippocampal gyrus. It's quite a small structure, about the size of your little finger, but this belies its critical functional role. It is the seat of short-term memory. Loss of the hippocampus can cause complete and pterograde amnesia which means that it's impossible to form new memories. This loss can also result in impaired spatial memory, leading to difficulties in navigation, say working out how to get home from the shops, or recognising when your favourite chair has been moved. So while quite small, the hippocampus is an extremely important part of our brains. We have two hippocampi, one on each hemisphere of the brain. They are effectively joined together by a white matter bundle, the fornix, which contains most of the efferent fibres that arise from each hippocampus via the crus. Now, while most of the fibres within the fornix project ipsilaterally, some do cross the midline to project to the contralateral hippocampus at the hippocampal commissure, a thin sheet of white matter found just posterior to the body of the fornix. This is very important in hippocampal function, as we'll see later. The internal structure of the hippocampus is very regular. In cross-section we can see two interlocking sheets of neurons that make up the hippocampal subfields, named CA1 to CA3, and the dentate gyrus. The subfields are made up of mostly excitatory pyramidal neurons, while the dentate gyrus is composed mainly of excitatory granule cells. I should note here that the dentate gyrus is often referred to as a separate structure to the hippocampus. However, as nearly all the neurons project to the hippocampal subfields, I shall refer to them as a single unit. In this section, I'm going to talk about the network found in the hippocampus. Now, just to be clear, I am presenting a very simplified version of hippocampal connectivity here. There are many, many ways in which different groups of neurons connect to each other in the hippocampus. A future video will cover those, but for now I simply want to concentrate on the basic network. The hippocampus receives input from cortical segments of the adjacent parahippocampal gyrus, namely the entorhinal cortex. Afferent projections from the entorhinal cortex synapse on the granule cells of the dentate gyrus via the perforant path. Axons of the granule cells project to pyramidal neurons in the CA3 subfield, forming the mossy fibre pathway, while axons of CA3 neurons project to CA1 pyramidal neurons to form the Schaefer collateral pathway. CA1 neurons project out of the hippocampus proper to the subiculum, which then projects back to the entorhinal cortex, as well as to many other brain regions. This is the classic trisynaptic loop of the hippocampal network. There are two other aspects of hippocampal connectivity that we should also consider. First is a recurrent connection in the CA3 subfield, where branches of the Schaefer collateral axons synapse back onto other CA3 neurons. So a single event that leads to one CA3 neuron firing an action potential can lead to the firing of a group of CA3 neurons. This increased CA3 output may be an important aspect of memory formation. The second aspect we should consider is the communication between the two hippocampi in the two cerebral hemispheres. Axons of CA3 neurons not only connect to CA1 neurons in the ipsilateral hippocampus, but they also project to the contralateral hippocampus via the hippocampal commissure. This ensures that both hippocampi are in receipt of information coming from either hemisphere of the brain. So, what does the hippocampus do? Well, you could ask, what doesn't it do? It's the place where many of our memories are initially encoded, including short-term memory, working memory, episodic memory, spatial memory. The list goes on. Without the hippocampus, we find it very difficult to function in the world. It's hard to learn anything when you can't remember what's just happened. 
So although the hippocampus may be small, its importance is anything but. Mm -hmm.